For a long time, I've thought about what a friend of mine once called a minimal writing machine. The idea is that out there somewhere, there's a computer that fits sort of this gray area, the Goldilocks zone, to make it a really good computer for writing. So you don't want to use something too modern that you can do all of your work on, but you also don't want to do something so old that it's impossible to get your text or markdown off of it onto another computer. Now over the years, I've tried this several times. I did it with a 12 inch power book for a while. I tried a black MacBook. I even tried my hand at an E-Mate. Didn't, didn't really work too well. So I got frustrated and sort of gave up the project. Now when the iPad was introduced, I thought that they'd done it, that Apple had released the minimal writing machine that my heart so desired. Think about it, especially with an external keyboard, the iPad's pretty good for writing on. It's just a sheet of glass that is your text document. And back in those early days before multitasking, it was just you and your words. Now, of course, I quickly realized, like everybody else, that on iOS, a push notification is just a second away, bringing the whole world crashing into your writing session. It just didn't work for me. So I gave up the idea again. I sort of put it on the shelf and carried on. And then, recently, I came across a company named AlphaSmart. Before we get into the device itself, I want to talk a little bit about the company AlphaSmart. It was founded in the early 90s by a couple of former Apple engineers who had this vision for an education product that was basically a computer based around a keyboard, and that's, that's what they made. A piece of plastic with a keyboard in it and a small screen above so you could see the text being entered, and it was really made for word processing and teaching students how to type. Now remember, this is the early to mid 90s. The PowerBook was still pretty new and way, way too expensive to put into the hands of a bunch of students. So the AlphaSmart was designed for this market. In fact, there's a really interesting story they were selling to teachers and to school districts. They showed a demo and a teacher came up and said, is this all this does? They sort of looked at the ground and shuffled their feet and said, you know, yes, it's a word processor and a, you know, a typing platform. And the teacher said that they loved it, that they loved how simple it was it wasn't a lot of overhead. So AlphaSmart basically stuck to that recipe all through the 90s. They did, of course, add blue curvy plastic after 1998's iMac, like, like everyone did. But in 2002, they did something really interesting. They released a product called the Dana. It ran Palm OS and it had touchscreen and stylus support and a bunch of apps. A couple years later, they backed off of that and they released the Neo line, which is what I've got, kind of back to basics, typing, word processing, and very few educational applications on it. They sold these things up until 2013, and in fact, you can still import the text, as I'll show you, running macOS High Sierra. So this is the Alpha Smart Neo 2. It's the last model the company made. It was discontinued in 2013, and it's all built around a keyboard and a small screen. The screen is not backlit, and the viewing angles aren't great, but it works for what it is. The keyboard is comfortable with nice amounts of travel, and all the function keys are where everything uh, is sort of stashed away. There's no touch bar here, real honest to goodness function buttons. I can turn the device on. It's powered by AA batteries. This model gets something like 700 hours of battery life, which is bananas. Here, files one through eight allow me to toggle through any open uh, documents that I have on my device. I can save more than eight and open them in a different menu, but I've got eight shortcuts here. I can uh, go home and I can go to the end of the file, just like any text editor. I can run spell check. We'll run it here and it will uh, tell me, okay, the word text expander, which is in my in my document, is, it's not a word the Neo 2 knows and I can ignore it, edit. I can look at context or I can add it. I wanna add it in this case. So it's been added to my custom dictionary. I can print the document uh, via USB or infrared. Uh, I can find something in the document, so I can look for the word Dropbox, and it will find it in context in my document. I can clear a file, Y for yes, N for no. Uh, and I've got a bunch of applets here, which we'll come back to. And way down here at the end, I have the send button. So the obvious question here is how do I get text from this, my Alpha Smart, to something a bit more modern, like say a MacBook Pro running High Sierra in a Google Doc? Well, it's really easy. I take a USB cable, plug it into, into the Mac, 
takes a second, the Office Smart recognizes it, and then I can simply hit the send button from whatever file I'm in. And the text gets typed right in. You can see it there on the screen. Uh, and I can even use the AlphaSmart keyboard as a keyboard for my Mac now. So I'm not touching my Mac, I'm typing on the AlphaSmart. So let's take a look and see what's behind this applets button. So the Neo 2 sort of has different modes. Right now I'm in Alpha Word Plus, which is the text editor, but it has accelerated reader, it has some uh, math and keyword things, you know, a lot of educational tools. I've got a calculator here, so I can go in here and I can, uh, I can do some math. Here, all built right in. I can go in here and I can look at my control panel. So I can set uh, screen contrast, the fonts, different, what different buttons do. I have a keyboard command reference list. So these are all the keyboard shortcuts the Neo 2 supports. These are all very, very Mac-like. In fact, you'll notice there's a command key right on the keyboard, no doubt uh, harkening back to its roots, company founded by Apple employees. But I want to go uh, back into Alpha Word Plus here, back to my text editor. And whenever I'm done, I simply hit the off button. The data is stored internally. It has a built-in, a small built-in battery as well to preserve memory as when you change out the double A's. But with that 700 hours of battery life, you don't need to do it very often. Okay, so time for some real talk. Am I going to give up my iMac Pro or even my iPad when it comes to writing blog posts on 512 pixels or getting ready for podcast? No, of course not. That writing needs a lot more stuff than just a text document. I need a browser, I need things like Text Expander to make that work go as efficiently as possible. However, I am looking at doing a lot of more creative writing this year, stuff that I will probably only ever see. And for that, this may be the right tool. I don't need that other stuff if I'm just writing, you know, something that's already in my head. And I'm looking forward to trying it. I'm gonna give it a real shot. I'll let you know how that goes. Now you may have noticed I'm wearing this shirt today. It says Operation Broken Silence. That's a nonprofit my brother runs and they are funding a school in a refugee camp in South Sudan. I'm helping them fund the eighth grade classroom this year. Now, when we think about education, you know, our kids have access to technology like this. You know, maybe they're not using an Alpha Smart, but our kids have computers in their classrooms and iPads and all that stuff. That is not true around the world. In fact, the school in the refugee camp barely has any supplies at all, and they're dependent on people like you and me to keep the doors open. So, there's a link in the description below. You can go check out what they're doing and learn more, and maybe even get involved. I'd really appreciate it. If you like this sort of stuff, get subscribed to the channel. I do tech stuff a couple times a month here. And until next time, adios.